In a game as dangerous as combat sports, errors in judgment can have potentially life-altering consequences. But for this video, we're going to take a look at the extremely dumb decisions made by fighters and how they were punished for them. Seriously, all of these could have been avoided if cooler heads prevailed. And to kick things off, we have a truly one in a million moment. This kickboxing bout looked pretty straightforward, with the fighters trading blows normally at first. But when one of these guys slipped when trying a fairly normal kick, he landed on his back with such force he actually managed to knock himself out. Can you imagine being his opponent here? Sure, having another TKO on your record isn't a bad thing, but man, how do you even celebrate after winning like that? The dude got robbed of his chance to feel proud of a win. A hilarious example of just how badly things can go for a fighter who's not careful of his footing in the ring. If you watch this channel often enough, you'll know that we have a real soft spot for trash talkers getting destroyed after walking into a random gym and disrespecting its members. And for this street fighter, it's hard to know what his actual game plan was, because based on what we saw, this dude's overall skills were not up to spec. Facing off against an MMA fighter, this cocky and overconfident young man was immediately grounded, and from there, he was forced to deal with a hellacious onslaught of strikes from the top position. And yeah, his BJJ talents proved to be totally non-existent. He had no hope of escaping and probably could have saved himself a lot of pain had he decided against doing what he did. <laughs> Having bad defensive awareness can be one hell of a problem for a young boxer, especially if they fight as recklessly as this guy did. After opening up on his opponent with a flurry of wild punches, this guy seemed to have absolutely no care in the world for just how open he was to the counter. And when his adversary found his moment, this guy never saw it coming. And you know what they say about punches you don't see coming? They hurt the most. And it's not even particularly close. This guy ate a truly massive punch, and his opponent took the opportunity to land one more on him when he was already out. Seemed like a pretty personal grudge, right? Well, he probably should have defended himself better. BJJ, all things considered, is a far more gentle art than most fighting systems. Or, at least if you consider getting choked out or having your arm ripped to the point of dislocation gentle. But either way, most rule sets tend to exclude the more dangerous techniques that require brute force, such as slamming an opponent on their back or their head. For this guy, he seemed to take an opportunity to really punish his opponent with absolutely no reason why. After scrambling into a stronger position, he had his opponent in the air, ready to put him down and restart his advance. But in a moment of madness, he decided to slam him to the canvas like a D1 wrestler. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is grounds for a DQ. We've all seen those legendary moments in fights where a guy drops his hands and beckons on his opponents to hit him. And even when they try to hurt him, this fearless fighter's chin is so battle-tested that the shots have zero impact. Well, for this kickboxer, he seemed to think he had it all figured out until his opponent took his time and landed the perfect fight-ending blow to KO him right then and there. Seriously, how stupid do you need to be? Out of all the entries on this video, this one hits just a little different. If you watch this channel, you'll know we love to feature some Charlie Z every now and again. The guy basically has made a career off of challenging pro fighters to spar in the gym, only to amp up the intensity, take a massive beating, and then claim that he won by some technicality. The guy is clearly very deluded. But one of the most famous Charlie Z clips came when he made the mistake of sparring and then later sucker punching the famed fighter turned coach Floyd Mayweather Sr., who's obviously the father of Floyd Jr. And to say that Floyd put a beating on him will be putting it lightly. As soon as that sucker punch landed, Charlie Z made himself about a dozen new enemies in that room. Yeah. 
Jake Shields and AJ Azagarm are known as two of the most, how do we put it, colorful figures in the BJJ community. And during an infamous matchup they shared, things got a little too heated to continue. First, it was AJ who decided to slap Shields in the face, mirroring the technique of Jake's longtime friends and training partners, the Diaz brothers. But when Shields decided to slap him back and would not accept an apologetic handshake, the fight was quickly called off. Because, let's be real, with these two guys involved, things could have easily gotten very ugly. Here we go. There you go. We got a little scuffle on the go. AJ Oh, we got a late stop. Taunting in the fight game is a high risk, high reward kind of pursuit. Sure, you could successfully rattle your opponent's confidence and cause them to make a mistake. Hell, you could even score yourself a viral moment if it all goes well. But if you taunt someone and they tune you, well, that's your own fault. And for this Lethway fighter, man, he just got the timing of this taunt all wrong. One second he was calling on his adversary for action, the next he was getting scooped up off the canvas. Fighting is a tough game, folks. Any regular viewers of this channel will know that we absolutely love some Buakau violence. And in this clip, the legendary striker shows exactly what happens when you break the rules in front of him. In Muay Thai, you can't kick an opponent more than once if you've caught their leg in your hands. One kick is fine, two, illegal. And so when his opponent broke this rule, Buakau decided to teach him a lesson. What followed was a series of brutal knockdowns, with Buakau seemingly getting in the zone after watching his opponent break the rules. And to think that this could have been avoided if the dude had just played fair. Oh, this one is just bad on so many levels. This guy found himself stuck in his opponent's guard in by no means a terrible situation, but not ideal. So, what did he do? Well, instead of relying on technique, he decided to pick up his adversary and slam them on their head, an illegal move. But the bigger problem seemed to come from the fact that he actually hit his own head off his opponent's head and they both hit the canvas. Seriously, you couldn't script a more pathetic sequence. It takes two to tango, but man, this BJJ matchup deserved to end like this. After one of these guys decided to turn his back on his opponent and basically approach him with his own rear end in the air, it was clear that there was so much disrespect intended. But disrespect isn't as illegal in BJJ as kicking someone is. And that's exactly what happened next. The dude was obviously annoyed, but the second he decided to throw a kick, the matchup was ended right then and there. What a weird pairing. This next one is a classic example of just how badly things can go for you if you're way too confident in your own skills. And this dude seemed to think he could defeat this young woman despite her having the clear technical edge. Of course, this did not go well for him. She basically teed off on her target with whatever strikes she wanted, chopping his legs until he very meekly fell to the floor, indicating to the world that he was totally finished. This was just about as bad a performance as you'll ever see, and we have no idea what he expected to happen in there. Sometimes when you're faced with a threat, you gotta take action. And for this guy, he was clearly listening to his coach when they called time, causing him to drop his hands and relax a bit. But his opponent? Well, he seemed pretty aggressive in there and continued to look like he was about to start throwing hands even as his coach commanded him to stop. So, instead of waiting around to find out, this boxer decided to take matters into his own hands shooting a rapid double leg on his aggressor, immediately containing whatever danger he posed. Some quick thinking and some technical skill can really go a long way. The legendary hard sparring sessions of the golden era of MMA created some of the most battle-ready warriors in the history of the sport, and the former pride champion Vanderlei Silva was as good as any of them. In the gym, he was just as fierce. A lot of guys will hit you as hard as you hit them in sparring allowing things to be kept at a slow pace whenever needed. But when someone made the mistake of hitting Vanderlei too hard, the beast emerged, and the results were truly scary. The moral of this story? Maybe don't mess around with a guy who has the axe murderer as a nickname. Speaking of especially violent sparrers, Sean Strickland has made a reputation for himself as a guy who takes his work in the gym very seriously. In fact, the UFC middleweight champion prides himself on his ability to go hard round after round. And if you're the type of online troll who will actually step up to the plate and test yourself, Strickland is the kind of guy who will oblige you. In fact, he's beaten up many trolls in the past. And this guy, who had the nerve to challenge him, was beaten convincingly as soon as they started. 
Sure, he had a smile on his face, but the dude's pride was surely hurting. A lot of guys these days try to pretend they're channeling their inner beast by imitating battle cries in the ring. Well, this guy's a prime example of how not to try and receive the fighting blessings of your warrior ancestors. In a sparring session, he decided to drop his hands and let out a guttural roar in the face of his advancing opponent. Surely his intensity and aggressive energy would protect him from any incoming blows, even if his hands were down, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not how things played out. After absorbing a couple of shots, a third one stiffened him like a board, and he fell to the canvas totally out cold. A hilarious example of just how badly ego can hurt you in the ring. If you ever hear of a guy with a 200-0 record on the streets, then you, my friend, are most likely listening to a liar. And in this hilarious viral clip, Chris Curtis was good enough to take time out of his busy schedule so he could teach a lesson to this unbeaten street fighter. With Curtis' teammate Sean Strickland cage side providing commentary, Curtis ruined his opponent's body early on, landing at will to the midsection, causing our unbeaten street fighter to try and give up. When he was pushed to at least finish the round, Curtis was once again able to have his way with him, and he was very clearly going easy on him. But here's the crazy part. When all was said and done, this totally deluded street fighter told Curtis he could have knocked him out at any time, which sent Curtis into a rage. But this street fighter would not be coaxed into putting his gloves on, and he left the gym a victim of a viral beating with over a million views. 200 wins and one loss, that ain't bad. Joke. This next one is the type of decision that just makes zero sense to anyone with half a brain. This guy had all the time in the world to figure out his next move. Sure, his opponent was threatening his neck, but all things considered, by picking him up like this, things could have been a lot worse. So what did this genius decide to do? Well, he opted for an attempt at front flipping his way out of the choke, or jumping downwards with such force that he basically slammed his opponent down on their head. A totally illegal move and one of the stupidest decisions imaginable. These taunters just never learn, do they? In this case, another totally dim-witted decision to provoke an opponent of legitimate skill caused this fight to end in violent circumstances. Calling on your opponent to up the ante isn't always a bad thing, and you can really get the crowd going too, but in this case, the pace immediately lifted, and his opponent started to find home for shot after shot, eventually dropping his target with a head kick that damn near sent him flying out of the ring. However, the fight wasn't over yet, as the taunter still managed to claw his way back to his feet. No, it took a second head kick to get the job done, and this one was a far more definitive strike than the first. That is how you make a real statement in a fight. You let your hands, knees, kicks, and elbows do the talking for you. 